Gareth, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. What brings you to ESA 2016? Well, we've uh, been members of the ESA for uh, something like six years, uh, and uh, I've spoken at probably the last four or five ESA meetings. This is a unique opportunity for us to get out to the, uh, the worldwide community uh, around energy storage. Uh, and so here we are uh, this year, our stand is bigger and better than ever, and you know, we're getting more visitors than ever. So it's, it's a really important piece in our sort of marketing activity, if you like. So you have a, a fairly unique storage mechanism. Yes, a you, you don't it. see many other people uh, pushing our particular technology. So uh, Highview Power Storage uh, owns some intellectual property and engineering services around liquid air energy storage. And that works by taking ordinary air, cleaning it up a little bit, taking the moisture out, refrigerating it until it gets cold enough to condense, and that's at about minus 190 degrees Celsius. We put that condensate in a tank, and when it's ready to be turned back into energy, you pump it to pressure, add a bit of heat, and then you expand the high pressure gas in a turbine. Uh, it's a really interesting uh, type of technology. It's extremely clean. There's no combustion or no uh, unpleasant chemicals involved. It uses standard machinery from uh, the uh, industrial gas, the uh, LNG and the utility industry, uh, which has been available for many decades. It's also put together from basic components which have been around for many, many decades, at least as long as the utility industry. It lasts a long time, and uh, the most important thing, it's extremely low cost. Where are you in your development cycle? Well, we've, uh, we've been working at this for 10 years now, uh, and I uh, started off in the university with some bench testing, that was Leeds University. Uh, we then went on to a pilot demonstration back in about 2010, uh, and that was a half a megawatt, two and a half megawatt hour system. We ran that at a little power station near Heathrow Airport called Slough Heat and Power. Uh, we ran that for four years. Uh, we've since dismantled that pilot plant and donated it to Birmingham University, actually. And uh, we've got a whole new breed of, of uh, chemical engineers learning their trade on our, uh, on our liquefaction plant. Um, and uh, we're currently just commissioning a 5 megawatt, 15 megawatt hour plant, which uh, the UK government's Department of Energy and Climate Change has uh, generously helped us with by uh, making quite a substantial contribution towards the, uh, towards the cost. So we're, we're deployed at sort of demonstration scale, and our next step is large scale commercialization because it's at large scale that this technology really starts to sing economically. I was going to compare you to the Dyson of storage. That would be more than generous, <laughs> yes. Why that route? Well, the, the, I mean, there are a number of, uh, number of advantages. Uh, so firstly, it's quite a clear field. There aren't many other people working on it. We do have some large-ish com uh, competitors. Lindy and Hitachi are looking at this technology, but they have told us they're about three to four years behind us. Uh, previously, Air Products have looked at this technology, and so have Praxair, uh, but um, they both uh, tried to deploy it in a slightly different way to us, uh, and ultimately, uh, you know, never built anything. So, as far as I'm aware, we're the only uh, company in the world that has built uh, demonstration projects of, uh, of this technology. So, it's a relatively clear field, but the important thing is. As I mentioned earlier, it comprises uh, components which come from the major uh, engineering industries. So, you know, we don't have to invent anything in particular to be able to realize this technology. It's more about clever engineering and process design, putting together existing bits of equipment which are proven technologically, have the backing of big engineering firms so we don't have to worry about performance and warranties and that kind of thing and it allows us as a small company to be able to pull together a really interesting technology uh, and, and uh, maybe in the next breath I'll talk a little bit about um, the attributes of it which are particularly interesting for where we are today but it allows us to pull this technology together it's large scale long duration and um, even though we're a small company, you know, we can own the intellectual property and the designs behind that and still, um, you know, still be able to deploy it without having to build very large pieces of equipment. How receptive has the market been? 
Ah, well, now that's a very interesting question. So uh, this is the utility space we're playing in. It's notoriously conservative and slow moving. So, you know, suffice it to say, we've been working at this for 10 years and we're still only at the demonstration phase. But we really are on the cusp of deployment now. You know, you'll have noticed at the conference that most of the discussion is about batteries, particularly about lithium ion batteries. And um, they're a fantastic product. They're backed by some of the world's largest corporations. They're very effective at pushing their product and, and they've got lots of development money to develop it. And, uh, you, you know, it's come down significantly in cost over the last few years. And with the, the sort of push of those large corporations, several markets have emerged. But, and they're all, they all have one thing in common, is they're relatively fast acting, short duration markets. And the thing that the pressure which is building up behind this is where are the long duration large scale products? You know, we all know about pumped hydro, um, that's a large scale long duration product, but the problem is it belongs up in mountains where there are big reservoirs and you, you, you know, the, the, the need for storage is usually in some high load density point hundreds of miles away so you know you have a, a storage device up in the mountains and you need hundreds of miles of wires to connect it to where it actually is required so what we need is a locatable large-scale long-duration technology and there aren't many other choices out there we absolutely are firmly convinced that liquid air can provide that the the, the giga plant that we've recently designed and we put the supply chain together for at 200 megawatts and 1200 megawatt hours can provide can fill that gap it's completely locatable there's a supply chain in place already it's existing proven technology what's not to love uh, you know other than uh, the utility industry doesn't really know us that well we're a small company we don't have a huge marketing machine so you, you know it's quite hard work for us to push ourselves into that space however we have a plan and the plan is to license our technology to large partners. So we recently uh, sold a license to GE. And uh, you know, that multiplies our effective sales force by uh, two orders of magnitude. Uh, we can get access to the world's largest utilities and customers. And it's that approach which is helping us to open the door and really make some inroads into the utility market. We'll watch your progress with great interest. Thank you. So what does the future hold? Well, uh, so um, I think for, it, it depends, you know, are you buying or selling? So I think the, the, the important thing is uh, our investors who have supported, we have a, a fleet of ultra patient angel investors who've supported us for the last 10 years. And I'm extremely grateful to them, of course. But, you know, they're getting tired. So, uh, you, you know, one of the things that we'd like to do is get either a strategic partner in place or you know sufficient traction with licensees so that um, you know our, our long-standing and tired investors can start to get some dividends or at least get some liquidity in their holdings so that they can trade out some strategic investments you, you know would help us but it would also give us the growth capital that we need to really expand and, and, the, and, the, and the driver for us now is that, you know, because we're a small company, we can't get across as many markets as we'd like to now that we've proven out the product. And, uh, you know, for that, we need a bit of support and some capital. So that's really where we're headed uh, is, uh, you, you know, bringing in the capital required to, uh, to grow the business. Thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome.